So just to give you a big overview of what's in Ultimate 22.2, I mean, App Builder is always releasing very frequently, but this is kind of a stage moment, right? We can, we can actually talk about what's actually in the product as a, as a whole. So this release, we have uh, some great feature enhancements for the grid component itself. And some of those benefits actually also translate to other grid-based components like tree grid. So for grid, we are now showing off the column-based enhancements. So what uh, that allows you to do is control what columns you're actually able to see in the component. I'm going to show that to you briefly. Then we have the tree grid component now part of the App Builder toolbox. Then we have components like the accordion. We always had expansion panels, but accordion basically allows you to kind of put real custom components in there, but at the same time control how uh, it expands and collapses. So you can have multiple expand or single expand. And naturally you can put all kinds of content in there. So it could be a heavy text-based content like a FAQ, not a problem for the accordion component. And then we have a lot of quality of life kind of features, which are kind of essential if you want to really share your vision with somebody else. So we have this ability now to share a link to your application so that you can now post it on Twitter or send a link over your chat and people will be able to see it even if they are not signed in or have an account with Infogistics. The other quality of life feature I'll show you is that now we actually export licensed packages if you are actually a subscription owner. So if you are subscribed, you do not actually have to do anything else other than do this one-time thing, which again, I'll show you, which allows you to now use licensed packages for your application. And then we kind of brought back the support for Safari and Firefox. I don't know how many of you are on Macs, but I used to be on Safari, uh, Safari a lot, but now it's back. And then we actually had in, in, included the support for more Google fonts, pretty much all of them. And now when you're creating your theme, so right now I'm using one of those custom fonts from Google. And this kind of expands the universe of font options you had as part of theming. And if time permitting, I'll go into 22.1 to just give you a quick refresher on what was there previously. So what you're seeing here is basically the application preview for App Builder. And this is like an app which I created with all the components just to give you a feel for how the components are actually behaving. So this is actually the tree component that basically expands and collapses. And I can actually set it part of navigation so I can use it for routing for my application. But on top of that, the real true secret sauce of App Builder is anything you create in App Builder. And this is actually a compiled version of the same app. It's supposed to look exactly identical, right? So you do not have to actually worry about theming or styling. And this, what you're seeing here is pretty much what we had actually shown you in application preview, but after generation, it still looks identical. So let's talk about the grid column features. So I'm gonna go back into edit here. And with the grid column features, you know you can see JSON always binding to data and sometimes his data sources could have a lot of data fields. And what we wanted to do is sometimes when I'm designing, I only want to show off a few columns. I don't wanna show all the columns. And now what it allows us to do is you can see here in the outline, it pretty much shows all the columns which are bound to this particular grid. And in this case, I'm bound to a mock data source or a sample data source we have in App Builder called employees. And it has a lot of columns. And sometimes I don't want to show all the columns. So with the grid column-based features, what it allows me to do is I can actually go in here and pretty much nuke it, right? So what that means is I can just come into the outline and hit delete and my columns are gone. And what that means is that once you have nuked it at the designer level, it won't even show up inside your code gen. And sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. But in this case, it's only actually showing you the columns that you have available. I can go back in here. And the column-based features also gives us other abilities. So now I want, if I want to change the ordering of the columns, it's not a problem. I can do it directly drag and drop on the design surface here. Or of course, I can just move things in the outline, right? So it gives you complete flexibility on what columns to show and in what order these columns should show up. But if you want to still show these columns in code generation, we also have a way for that. So I can just select the grid. I'm going to rebind to get my columns back. I'm going to go to Northwind, employees, and my columns are back. And now what I can also do is I can just multi-select columns. So say that I do not need to see these uh, columns. I can select all of them. And I can come in here and say, just you know, hide these columns, right? Now the columns are hidden, 
But the difference is that when I actually look at the code, the columns will still show up, but we have actually taken care of showing that we're setting that property hidden is equal to true for those particular columns, which is what exactly Jason was doing a while back. Now with these features, what it also allows you to do is I can, in this particular grid, I don't have a lot of features set up, right? So one of the features is hiding. If I actually enable hiding, it's basically you giving your users control over whether this column can be brought back into visibility or not, right? So if I enable this feature, you can see the toolbar actually shows up and you have the six columns hidden feature in there. And what that allows users to do is even though the grid initially renders with six columns hidden, they can go in there and then enable those columns back. But you can always have more control over it and basically say that, okay, even though I have those, those columns as hidden, so in this case, you can see hide this column, I can also disable that particular feature. And this is actually useful. Say that you have a row editing enabled and you want certain columns not to be editable. So let's just do that here. So say that I can pick this title field here, or let's say last name. And I say, you know what, disable editing. For that, I'll go to the grid. I'll enable that editing feature called row editing. And now if I go back into my column, you can see disable editing is available. So when the grid actually, somebody's using that grid, they will not be able to edit that particular row. So it's pretty flexible in, in, in that sense. And this is basically setting the stage for more column-based features in the near future. But for now, we also have the support for unbound columns. So you can come in here and insert a brand new column. It's unbound. And you can leave it unbound. You can say my unbound column. And this could be handy for you if you plan to add some custom content via templates after you generate this particular application. But you can create those columns in here. I can set the header text on this particular column. And voila, you can have a blank column in here. It'll generate just fine. And you can also bind it back, right? So for whatever reason, if I remove some columns, I would say that I want to remove this avatar URL. I just say I nuked it. I can come to this unbound column and I can bring it back from my data source again. And that's my avatar. And my header is also updated with avatar URL. So with this column-based features, you get all the, the beauty of drag and drop. You can control what columns to actually even show in code gen and also whether you want users to be able to enable these columns hidden or pinned, it works the same way. Now with this column features, you can see that when I transition to the tree grid, it comes in very handy, right? So say that in this case, the first column is always showing these expanders in the case of the tree grid. And the tree grid is pretty much identical to the, the actual grid. The only difference is that we have this additional property called foreign key. And the foreign key is basically saying, okay, what is the unique identifier for the parent, right? So then right now it's a flat data and it's actually showing you what the unique identifier is. And I've picked manager ID, which happens to be in this data source. But now if I come in here and I grab title and move it to the front, well, guess what? It now shows me the, the expanders on the first column. So this gives me full control with this column features working in conjunction with tree grid to give me that control over what the data should look like. Let's go back to the preview here. I already showed you the accordion component in runtime. In terms of a design time experience, it's pretty much the same. Any accordion panel I can select and it basically expands it for me so that I can add the content in there. And from a component perspective, it doesn't have that many properties other than the ability to say, okay, do you want to expand just the single panel? or do you want to expand multiple? So in this case, this particular accordion expansion panel has single. So I'll just go to this one and set it to multiple. And if I preview it, now you can see that all things can be expanded one at a time. Whereas this one only shows you one expansion panel at a time. Now I've talked about the basic components, grid columns, tree grid, accordion, and now let's talk about the other quality of life features. So which is like sharing and anonymous preview. And in order to do that, all you need to do is come into your app, which you have designed. And if you're using the App Builder desktop app, this would be extremely useful for you to send a link to us, say that if you want to troubleshoot something or you want to send it to your stakeholders, all you have to do is come in here, hit share, and it creates this link for us. And we also have included a tweet link. If you are actually tweeting about it, the apps you have created, 
And it actually creates this nice little, you know, let's just create one. It'll create a nice little card for us so that you could actually show off, you know, the apps you have created. But now if you actually send it to someone, they can actually access it without actually requiring any kind of registration. And we also have the ability, even after you have shared the link, you, if you change your mind and you want to revoke uh, that particular access, you can always come in and disable this particular link. So anybody who accesses this particular link will actually see a notification that the app owner has prevented you from viewing this particular application, right? Let's go back to my keep me honest screen. Then let's talk about license packages. So the big difference now is in the past, when people were generating apps from App Builder, we were always generating it with a trial package. So you actually had to go in and, and upgrade it yourself. But now if you are licensed and you're using App Builder, we take care of that. The only thing you need to do extra is for the app, so I'm gonna show you Angular here. So this is Visual Studio Code. We have this readme file in here. And there is this one command you can run, which is called npm run infogistics login, which gives you a guided experience on setting up this npm rc file, which will have all the information required for you to, to register, to, to log into the license packages. And from there, that point onwards, you don't actually ever have to do this on this machine again. So it's just a one-time thing, but with this, you do not, you'll always get the license packages right out of the, out, out of the box. But if you're a trial user, not a problem. You don't have to do this. You can just go in here, hit NPM I, NPM run, and then good, you're good to go. Let's go back to my slides here. And then Safari, Firefox support I already talked about. Google Fonts is a minor update. It's only matters if you really care about uh, this feature, but basically now if you go into your themes area, and you try to edit this particular theme and under typography, you see we have all the Google fonts available. So if you have uh, say IBM Plex, well, guess what? It's available for us. And now you can have all the Google fonts, which actually we have actually pre-filtered the fonts for the ones which have all the font fades. So, but it's still a lot of fonts for you to actually se select from. And then just to give you a quick review of what was there in the past, in the previous releases, of course, we had, you know, what everything Jason is showing you for category charts. It's also available in App Builder. And then we had actually released GitHub integration. If you guys had not following us very closely with GitHub integration, we, uh, we made an improvement so that it doesn't roll back changes when you do PRs. And then all the app templates and the layout presets, which allow people who are not familiar with the flex layouts to quickly create some common layouts inside of App Builder much more easily. And then uh, we have this open API access for both public sources and also for local. And then we had released four UI kits uh, for Sketch and XD, but now very soon, I think releasing a Figma support for these particular UI kits. So that's a quick summary of what you would find in App Builder very, very soon. Uh, we're gonna be updating production with all these features for you to try.